Hi, and welcome to this mini workshop on how you can track or chart your cycle. And I already love this word, charting your cycle, because for many of us, our menstrual cycle is somewhat this unknown territory, and we start exploring it and charting it. And it's also an, an ever-changing territory. So um, I really love thinking of it as an ongoing practice that we can be curious about to build this relationship with our bodies. I am Lisa. I support women and menstruators moving through challenging parts in their life, uh, in their cycles that can be either in their menstrual cycle that they have a very challenging experience with, for example, painful bleeds, or who are moving through a dark period in their life. And um, because I want you to get back in touch with your body so you can lead your life powerfully from within, I believe there is no worse condition than feeling powerless in your life. And I want to make a contribution so that you can reclaim the power that you already have within you. And part of this is uh, this journey of cycle tracking, because as women or menstruators, few of us, us have been raised to see our cycle as the gift that it actually is. And believe me when I say I didn't uh, think of it as a gift for a very long time. Um, but when I started tracking my cycle and... Um, charting it and getting in touch with my body and how my body does things and um, build up this relationship a lot started to shift and that's why I really want to make this available to as many people as possible. Um, why could it be important to track? Um, for one thing you will know when you are fertile and when you are not so if you want to have a baby you know when you can become pregnant and if you do not want to have a baby you know when you could become pregnant and can take the necessary precautions um, also it will give you a deeper understanding of who you are of who, who you are in this life of what you love of what you don't love, what you're up for, what's your cup of tea and what isn't. So you can make confident choices. Um, it will give you a sense of control, but not in this like forced graspy way, but more in this rhythmic dependable way, because over a few cycles, you will find that there are certain rhythms to how your body goes through life. And that gives us a certain predictability, dependability. We can start preparing for certain phases, which is a really beautiful thing. And you learn to live more in tune with your body. As I said in the beginning, you stop struggling against your body all the time. I mean, yes, there will always be days when our body is behaving in a way we don't want, but we will learn more accept be more accepting and that will bring in so much more ease and we will find ways to live in tune with these rhythmic changes um yeah um, i would like to give you first of all a little overview over the basic blueprint of a cycle um, and i will use the seasons uh, to explain the different energies of each phase um, because nature is cyclical, nature works in four phases and um, we are of nature. So our bodies work in these phases as well. Now, if you live in a country or in a region that does not have four seasons, please bear with me. I will uh, try my best to make it easily understandable what these different uh, phases encompass. And um, maybe you can find your own ways of adapting, uh, yeah, of adapting your circumstance that you live in to this work of cycle awareness. I will bring up the cycle now. So 
I have linked the cycle with also the directions and the time of day, because that is another way how we can more easily understand the energies of the different phases. So we would begin in the east, or actually we would begin in winter. The winter time is when we bleed, when we are in menstruation, or when there is when the moon is dark which means you cannot see the moon in the sky. Um, our cycle is shaped after the moon cycle. And so these two uh, correspond, menstruation and dark moon. It's also the north in the directions and midnight, if you think of a day. And it's the fallow season. It's the season where you rest and you let, where the land recuperates, where, um, where maybe on the outside not much is happening, but on the inside a lot is being composted and um, you might receive ideas. It is also connected to the phase of life of the crone, which is the old and wise woman or the old and wise being um, that has already lived so much, has so much wisdom and uh, yeah. And then, uh, we move into the next phase, which is spring, in a spring, which is comparable to the east, to the morning. Everything is new. Everything starts to come back to life. It's the planting season. It's the season where we get new ideas and inspiration. Um, and in our cycle, menstrual cycle, it's the follicular phase. And uh, in terms of moon cycle, it's the first quarter the or the waxing moon phase. So on its way to become full. And uh, as for the life cycle, it's the moment of the maiden or the phase of the maiden, the, the young woman or the young being that is starting to explore the world and excited uh, about everything. And yeah. Then we move into the inner summer phase, which you can compare to noon in a day or uh, south as a direction when the sun is highest. Um, and that is the moment where we come into full bloom, where we love to celebrate, where we are often more communicative, want to be out with friends and celebrate life. And it's the time of ovulation. It's when the egg is released in us and um, we tend to be much more outgoing in that time than we usually are. Um, and it's connected to the full moon. It's when the energy of the moon is highest and shining a light on everything or uh, the mother phase or the, the parenthood where we birth something, <clears throat> something new into this world. And that can be birthing a baby. It can also be birthing a project something um yeah and then we move into the autumn phase the inner autumn connected to the west and the afternoon or evening where everything is starting to slow down a little the light isn't as much available anymore it's the season of harvest where we really prune and look at what's working in our life and what isn't and learning to let go of like the trees shed their leaves, learning to let go of the things that don't work for us or don't work for us anymore. They may have for a certain time, but now we can just let them go. This is the luteal phase in our menstrual cycle, which is the premenstrual phase uh, or the last quarter and waning moon in a moon cycle. And I have uh, written here the, the day, days for each, uh, each season of our menstrual cycle, but that's very, a very rough indication and can be totally different for you. Um, so when I stop sharing now, that's why I, what I want to say is that this cycle that I just showed you is like the archetypal cycle of when, for example, where I live, when I look into nature, it's working according to that rhythm. But our personal menstrual cycle get, can be completely different. 
And that's why it's so important that we chart our cycle because for some people ovulation that I showed you is more like this outgoing communicative uh, part. But for some people, ovulation is the exact opposite and they need to retreat back from, from the world and they need their own time to work through stuff. So it's really dependent on your body and your rhythm. And uh, that's why I want to provide you now with, a, uh, with an easy way to track your cycle and to track your rhythm. So the basics that you track, that you can track or chart, are the date, what date is it, the day of your cycle, and you begin uh, counting with one being the day, the first day of your bleed, of your menstruation, the first day is day one, or if you do not bleed, uh, do, do not menstruate, if you don't have a uterus, for example, or if you are post-menopause, then you go according to the dark Uh, to the moon and that means day one is the dark moon so when you have a menstrual cycle it's day one when you start bleeding and if you have if you go according to the moon cycle it's dark moon is day one then you write down the phase the season that i just showed you uh, whether you're in in a winter in a spring in a um, summer or in an autumn And last, you write down three words that describe how you are on that day. Um, and that, I mean, over a day, we can, like things happen and, whoa, this happened, I'm excited, that happened, I'm sad, now I'm this, now I'm that. But when in the evening you sit down and do this, reflect on what was the underlying mood or energy level that I had. It could be like you were very energetic or you were very tired or you were excited or you were scattered all over the place. Um, whatever describes your, your being best, that's, that's it, three words. So the date, the day of the cycle, the phase you're in and three words for how you are on that day easy as that. I have prepared a little a cycle charting sheet for you and I will link that below this video then you can print it out and start uh, charting right away with these simple tools. There is much more <laughs> that you can track and I will not go further into this here. If you would like to know more or um, if you have any questions about what I've just shared, please get in touch, write me an email, contact me on social media, uh, use my contact form, whichever way works best for you. I always love to have conversations around this. I love to give extra explanations or give you some more resources. I just can't cover everything in this little video. So um, when you do this practice of writing down your day and your phase and three words and you do that over three four five months you will find when you take put them next to each other you will find that there is a certain rhythm that the way you feel in spring the words you've written down are very similar or the words that you've written down for your um, summer are similar it's similar energy and that's how you can find out which in which phase of your cycle your energy is like what and that helps you prepare if, because if you know that in for example the autumn phase you usually have a major emotional breakdown then when it happens you are not surprised that it happens you know oh yeah It's, it's normal, it's okay. So you, you get into the state of acceptance. Yeah, it's normal. Or um, uh, if, if in, during winter, during menstruation, du during dark moon, you always need to retreat back from the world, you might block some time in your calendar and have an hour or two to yourself. Uh, so you can start working with this. One thing I want to mention is that... Um, when you go according to your menstrual cycle, I'm talking about a natural menstrual cycle, which means 
you are not taking any hormonal birth control because your homo, homo, these extra hormones that you take um, lead to not having a, a real menstrual cycle. So you are not taking hormonal birth control, you're not pregnant and you're not breastfeeding. In these three cases, you can simply go with the moon. This, and, and you also go with the moon when you don't have a menstrual cycle at all or not anymore. So only if you have a natural menstrual cycle, then you start uh, charting by the day of your menstrual cycle. And in all other cases, you start uh, charting by the day of the moon. Yeah, um, this was a little and hopefully easy introduction into charting and tracking your cycle and what it can do and what you can do with it. Um, if you would like to receive some support throughout your cycle or the moon cycle, I do write a free weekly newsletter called Soul Mail, and you can subscribe to that. I will link it below this video. And I send you little reminders. Hey, we're now moving into this phase collectively, um, things to pay attention to or celebrate or um, whatever it is, just so that you are reminded of these different phases when they come up. Um, and of course, other useful tips or insights I, I've gained or just a personal story from myself. Um, I love writing these letters. Uh, so I see them as personal letters to you. If you like receiving letters, get on that list. It's linked below this video. And now I wish you a beautiful day. As I said, if you've got any questions or would like to tell, to talk to me about this, get in touch um, and see you soon. Much love. <laughs>